Hello everybody, one more time, this is Alex Centeno and today we have another exciting tutorial like always and um, um, so last time uh, we were looking at some color grading for the vlog footage coming from the GH4, vlog L. And today what we're going to be taking a look at is an example of using a specific color grade for um, for uh, footage um, that is uh, popular. There's this movie coming out, or actually it's not coming out, <laughs> this movie that came out especially a long time ago, uh, called Nonstop with Liam Neeson. This movie is very very cool to me in terms of the color grading that they used. Very uh, uh, heavy use of the blue color and uh, yeah I mean, so today we're going to be looking at an example of how to achieve that particular look using DaVinci Resolve. So let's get to it. All right. I am here in DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, this is the look that we are going to try to achieve today. So let's get started. I'm just going to reset all grades and notes for this. And here we start. First thing, let's go ahead and do the resizing of our node so that it's, um, you know, just covering the whole screen. In this tutorial, I'm using a, uh, a production still. So it's not a movie in itself. It's not a film. Uh, real it's actually a still frame which serves perfectly for our purposes which is just to demonstrate the color grading aspect of it so first thing is exposure and I'm not going to do my exposure before adding my film emulation at the end first we're gonna call this LUT it's a film emulation LUT so 3D LUT, uh, in this case, it's already in Rec. 709, so I'm going to be using the Impulse LUTs Rec. 709 to Kodak uh, Vision 3, 5213FC. Uh, if you don't know what those things mean, you can actually check out another video tutorial that uh, was done before uh, in the same channel about uh, film emulation with impulse LUTs. Excellent. Once you have that, then you can come back to the exposure one and um, bring your waveform scopes and uh, start playing with your exposure uh, until you're happy with pretty much the results that you're getting. And uh, we can probably do another video tutorial sometime on uh, achieving proper exposure, but uh, it's outside of the scope of this one. So let's go ahead and do another note. This one I'm going to call CC for color correction or main color correction. Um, option P for a parallel node, although I'm just going to transform this one to a layer mixer node in the normal mode. So this one's CC, this one I'm going to call Skin. Uh, so all I'm doing is just two nodes uh, with layer mixer at the end of those two nodes. Skin, I'm going to qualify it. So Shift H to turn on my qualifiers. And um, I'm just going to, there you go. I'm going to be selecting here and just clicking to get my um, all the skin selected. Uh, all I'm doing here is just selecting uh, everything that is a skin and this should be part of this mask. I want you to see that as I'm clicking, it is actually uh, modifying my qualifier here. So that's looking 
very good, I think. back and retouch my mask after the fact uh, but uh, pretty much uh, you're going to select your skins uh, and the warm colors of the scene and uh, because of the layer mixer node having it at the bottom so you have two inputs in the layer mixer node the one at the bottom is not going to be treated with whatever corrections you do at the top and I'm gonna select my top here I'm gonna go to my log wheels and I'm gonna take a look at my mid-tone here just modifying and making it teal like so and I'm gonna reduce a little bit of the exposure altogether like the wheel here you can really bring it down altogether like so uh, it looks a little bit like the skin is now out of the frame, so it doesn't belong to the frame. So what I can do is just uh, reduce the gain of my uh, output. And so that is going to include a little bit of, of the teal in the different warm components here. And now with my skin selected, I can actually give a little bit of the orange treatment to the skins and that's pretty much it now finally I'm gonna create a vignette by creating a power window a circular power window around my subject like so let's go ahead and reverse it and then bring it down So, and increase the softness a bit so that it's not so noticeable the transition and uh, yeah that's looking very good all right great and uh, let's take a look at it before and after this is before this is after, this is before, and this is after. All right, so finishing um, touches or finishing ideas. Um, so as a digital media designer, one of the things is to understand that not necessarily because something is um, simple, that means that it's not well worth it or professional and there is a lot of confusion sometimes thinking that um, you have to do things complex in order to, or you have to uh, perform complex things in order to make them look professional not always that is the truth in fact I heard a professional color grader the other day saying that he was seeing people online doing a lot of more complex things that he usually does and he's color grading some footage in Hollywood and whatnot so uh, that is usually the case, uh, not because it is complex, that means that it's professional. So as an aspiring digital media artist, don't get so focused in just getting things, uh, in implementing things that are complex. If you can find something that is simple and it works, then do that. The second thing that I wanted to close with is that this is one of many tools and you don't have to use all your tools uh, for all your projects. Just like if uh, the sink in your house goes 
you know, ballistic and now you have to fix it, you're not going to use all the tools that you have in your bag to actually fix the sink. Uh, you would use the ones that are appropriate. Same thing applies for digital media. When you're creating an emotion, when you're creating a feeling in your audience, people are looking at this. Uh, what you want to use is the appropriate tools to convey that emotion. Uh, I think that this movie is very, very effective in making you feel that, that the cool and the teal and the blues make you feel like there's something dangerous in that plane and that it's um, uh, very high tech and things like that. And I think that they have achieved it very, very well. And so it doesn't have to be complex. It can be just, you know, it's something very simple. For some people, they just don't like it, but uh, I I like it a lot and I think that it, it really speaks to our archetypes as people. So, uh, so those two um, tips may just help you as an aspiring digital media artist to become uh, better and to grow in your profession. As always, if you have any comments, questions, remarks, positive or negative, we always welcome them uh, below in the YouTube uh, channel box. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful as always. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.